Welcome to the walkthrough orientation of your 2015 Pleasure Way Lexer vehicle built on the Chevrolet chassis. My name is Phil Nickel. I will give you a brief orientation of your vehicle. Your 2015 Lexer is equipped with many safety features. Some of the safety features of this vehicle are the fire extinguisher that is located just inside the passenger side entrance door. This gives you access to the fire extinguisher from the outside and the inside of the vehicle. Also, if you look just up from this fire extinguisher, you will notice the GFI plug. This GFI plug controls the fridge the kitchen and the bathroom if equipped with a bathroom plug. On this kitchen end panel as well, you will notice that you have your switches for your awning. This is an electric awning, the 11 foot carefree electric awning. To extend and retract, it is done at this switch panel here. Also, you have your porch light and your main lights of the main cabin of the vehicle on the kitchen end panel. This makes it very convenient as you open the door on the vehicle, you can turn on lighting so that you can see exactly what you're doing inside the vehicle. A smoke detector is also included in your safety equipment. The smoke detector is not hardwired into the vehicle. It is controlled by a 9 volt battery that is located underneath the cover. This battery should be checked yearly to ensure that the smoke detector is operating properly. Also, the smoke detector should be checked monthly to make sure that it is functioning properly. 9 volt battery is hidden underneath the cover. Just flip your smoke detector down. It will give you access to your 9 volt battery. On the kitchen upper end panel, you will find your kitchen lights that are for your countertop area. You will find your water heater switch. You will turn this switch on. You will notice the reset light will light until the water heater is operational. This light does not remain on while the water heater is functioning. You will also notice you've got your gen start stop switch with your hour meter. It is recommended that when running your generator, you first push the stop button for a few seconds. This will aid in priming your generator, then start the generator. If your auxiliary battery does not have enough power to start your generator, it is recommended you start the vehicle engine and then start your generator. Once the generator is running, then switch off your vehicle engine. You will also notice that you've got a monitor panel. This monitor panel contains the water pump switch. Your water pump is actually located underneath the passenger ottoman in the rear of the vehicle. This panel allows you to monitor your gray, black, and fresh water, and they are red at full, two-thirds, one full, and empty. It also allows you to monitor your battery. Your battery is monitored by C, G, F, and L, which means C for charging, G for good, F for fair, L for low. It will only be up at the C mark when the vehicle is running or when you are plugged into electricity. Within about five to 10 minutes of shutting down your vehicle or unplugging from electricity, you will notice that your battery will drop to the G mark. The final safety feature of your vehicle is the LP CO2 detector located directly below your closet in the rear of the coach. Make sure that this detector is free and clear from oil debris and that you're not blocking this detector as it is essential for monitoring LP gases and CO2 that may enter your coach. Also, pet food, pet supplies, shoes placed close to this detector may set this detector off. Your kitchen, although it is a small kitchen, is very user friendly. Your kitchen is equipped with a SMEV made by Domatic two burner stove. This two burner stove has a large burner and a small burner, glass cooktop. Ensure that you do not put the glass cooktop down when the burners are still hot. To ignite your stove, push the valve in, turn it to the flame, snap the igniter in the center of the stove. Once it is lit, you can then adjust for flame height. Your kitchen is equipped with a single handle kitchen faucet. This will give you both hot and cold running water. To get your hot water, ensure that your water heater is in the on position. Your sink is a stainless steel sink covered with a Corian countertop, which can also be used as a cutting board. You will notice it's got a smooth, good side. 
and the back side this would be your cutting board surface as well and a sink drain that empties into the gray water the gray water goes into the gray water tank all gray water in this vehicle from the bathroom sink kitchen sink or the shower enter the gray water tank only the black water goes into the toilet tank your kitchen is also equipped with a flip up counter extension this will give you additional working space or will give you a place to set your drink and food if you're watching TV at the back. It is magnetic to the back end of the counter. Just lift and lock your extension into place. To collapse your countertop extension, push the two end buttons, flip them down, and magnet the flip up back into place. Your Lexer is equipped with the Dometic three-way 8505 fridge. This is a 3.8 cubic foot fridge. The fridge can be run off of AC power or 110 power, propane or 12 volt DC power. If you push the automatic button, your fridge will automatically choose the best setting and best power source available for your fridge at the time. Once the fridge is operational, you can choose the temperature that you want to set your fridge to. This fridge will default to 110 first, then we'll try propane and then the 12 volt on the more automatic setting. This fridge as well has the removable freezer compartment to give you more fridge space inside and also has the lockout for the door so that when your motorhome is in a storage position, you can lock your fridge door in an open position. Please refer to your Dometic manual for operation of your refrigerator. Also, in the kitchen lower area, you have your sink door which gives you access to your P-trap underneath your kitchen sink. You have two drawers, both on full extension ball bearing glides. To release these drawers, if you ever want to take them out, there is a black handle on the slides. Simply push this down and the other one up and you can slide the drawer fully out. It also has a larger pot drawer in the bottom of the kitchen face frame. In the passenger side ottoman, you will find your breaker panel. This is the main breaker and distribution panel for the coach. This houses your 12 volt fuses and your 110 breakers. To access these breakers and fuses, just pull on the door. The door will come off. Now you have access to all of your 110 breakers and your 12 volt fuses. They are labeled on the front side of the door that you have just removed. To shut off a breaker and turn on a breaker, you need to flip the switch back to reset your breaker, ensure it's fully off, then flip it back on. In the cabinet door next to your distribution panel, you'll find also your manual reset breakers for your 12 volt system and the red key disconnect for your battery system. If the battery system is in the off position, the red key disconnect can be removed. To engage the red key disconnect, press it in turn it and lock it in position. Your red key disconnect does have to be in the on position in order to charge your auxiliary battery from your converter when you are plugged in. If you are operating by driving down the road and charging your auxiliary battery from your alternator, the red key disconnect can be in the off position. It is recommended that if your vehicle is going to be parked for any more than two days, that you turn off the red key disconnect so that it will not drain your auxiliary battery. You will also notice in this compartment, you have a number of manual reset breakers. There are the larger breakers for the charge lines and also a larger breaker for your generator. To reset the larger breakers, the high amp breaker, there is a small swing arm that is underneath the center bar. It will swing out to the left hand side if this breaker is tripped. Also, there is the manual reset breakers the small short stop breakers. These control your power sofa, your fridge, and your converter. To reset these breakers, you will push the reset button located on the copper post end. Just simply push that in. You will hear it click to reset those breakers. This panel would be the first area to check if any of your 12 volt system is not working. Reset the manual reset breakers connected to the appliance in question. Also check your charge line, ensure your red key disconnect is in the on position. From there, the second panel to check would be your distribution panel.
to access your converter and your automatic transfer switch, as well as the inverter breaker, remove the passenger side ottoman and backrest cushion, unscrew the cover lid, lift it off, and this will give you access to the converter, to your automatic transfer switch, and the back end of the distribution panel. You will also have access to the inverter breaker, which is down in the rear corner. This is a high amp breaker with a little flip arm that will flip out to the left hand side. Flip that in and tuck it back in. The automatic transfer switch in your vehicle chooses which power source that you are going to have, whether you have a generator on board or shore power. The default for the transfer switch is shore power. It will automatically be set to that. If you unplug from shore power and start your generator, it will take a few seconds for the automatic transfer switch to transfer over. The best way to know that it's transferred over is to watch your microwave. Once the display lights on your microwave, your generator is generating power into your vehicle. Your converter is a 45 amp converter with a built-in charge wizard. The charge wizard is a microprocessor which monitors your auxiliary batteries and puts in the appropriate charge from boost charge to a slow trickle charge. On this converter, you will also notice there are two 30 amp fuses. If your auxiliary battery is ever crosswired, it will blow these 30 amp fuses, which protect your converter. Your converter is plugged in to the distribution panel. If your converter is not operating, ensure that your converter is plugged in to the distribution panel. In the driver's side ottoman, with the cushion and backrest removed, you will notice that you have access to your exterior shower from the inside of your coach. This will also give you access to your water pump. Remove the two screws holding down the access lid and lift the lid, removing the lid so that you have access to your water pump. Your water pump is a SureFlow on-demand water pump. This water pump tries to keep a constant line pressure of between 20 and 30 PSI. You will notice in this area on your water pump you also have a filter ball. This filter ball is on the inlet side and it will filter the water coming from your water tank. Check and clean this filter regularly if your pump is not pumping properly. Also, if you are going to winterize your vehicle, you can hook your siphon line onto the inlet side of the water pump. To access your water heater and the bypass valves for your water heater, open up the driver rear door. You'll find the bypass valves located on the blue line at the bottom of the water heater and the red line at the top of the water heater. To turn these valves, just reach in between the sofa frame and turn the valve so that you have your water flow correct. Turn the valves off on the blue line on the bottom of the water heater and on the red line on the top of the water heater and open the valve in between the two for bypass position. The handle of the valve will be in line with the water line. When the valve is open, the handle of the valve will make a T with the water line when the valve is closed. You will also find in this compartment the control box for your water heater. It is the gray plastic box with a red heavy line coming in the red heavy line is the ignition line for your water heater. On occasion, you could knock the spade connector off of this water heater and you would not have ignition. Ensure that this spade connector is plugged in so that your water heater will ignite. With the back doors open, it gives you access to your main storage area underneath your seat. This is a large storage area. In the storage area, you also have pass-through storage into the main cabin of the vehicle so that you can put longer items through into the main floor of the vehicle. Please do not stack any materials in the water heater and water heater control panel area through the back doors. To recline your power sofa, push the switch on the driver's side rear upper cabinet. Push the down arrow. This will extend the power sofa. The power sofa in a bed position can be used as an adjustable bed depending on your sleeping preferences. You can sleep on your power sofa across the rear of the vehicle 
or your power sofa makes into twin beds without the ottoman cushion in the center. Take the Velcro off the back of the ottoman cushions and release them from the seat cushions. These will be used to make the full bed layout. The bed boards you will find in the front closet. To place these bed boards, lift one of your ottoman cushions, slide it in, move it underneath the secondary ottoman cushion and drop it onto the maple support. Do the same with the second bed board. Slide it in, pull it in, set it on the maple support and place your ottoman cushion back in the lock position. To fill in your full size bed, place the ottoman backrests in between the ottoman cushions. This gives you the full bed layout. You will notice one side of the bed is slightly longer than the other side. Located in your forward closet, you will notice your table pole, which is clipped to the front side of the wall. You will notice your table, which is clipped to the back side of the wall. With your table pole removed from your front closet, you will notice the table pole has a locking bolt on the bottom and a slotted groove in the table base located at the back between the ottomans in the rear of your coach. Place the table leg bolt into the slot on the base that is located between the ottomans. Rotate to lock this table pole into position. This table pole, once locked into position, will remain firm. Place the table on top of the table pole and click it into place. Now you can rotate this table into the position and the desired seating that you would like. If your table pole does not lock into position onto the table base, ensure that the locking bolt is fully turned out. In the full out position, you can set it down into your base and rotate it into the lock position. If the bolt is slightly in, it will not engage in the locking mechanism and will not lock your table pole into position. Your vehicle is equipped with a cool cat air conditioner. It is controlled by a digital thermostat located on the driver's side upper cabinet in the rear. You will notice that this is the thermostat for your heat, which is your furnace, for your cool cat air conditioner, and for the heat pump in your air conditioner. Please refer to your Dometic operations manual for proper use of your air conditioner, heat pump, and furnace switching on your thermostat. Right below your thermostat, you will notice that you've got your rear upper shelf lights. This is a switch that will control the rear upper shelf lights. As well on your rear upper shelf, you also have additional reading lights that have individual switches. To clean the filter on your cool cat air conditioner, you will have to remove the maple face frame that is around your cool cat air conditioner. To remove the maple face frame, remove the screw cap covers in the four corners and remove the number six Robertson screws that are in the corners. A number six Robertson screw is also known as a number one Robertson and usually associated with a green handled Robertson screwdriver. Your vehicle is equipped with a high point microwave oven. This is strictly a microwave. There is not room to put a convection oven in the Lexer because of ventilation. Please follow your owner's manual for operating instructions. It is a fairly straightforward microwave with a lot of presets that you can use for your typical baking needs. Your 24 inch LG TV is put onto a swing arm. Pull the cord at the bottom. This releases the TV and now you can swing the TV out for optimum viewing or turn the TV so that you can view it from the front portion of the vehicle. Always have your TV locked into position when the vehicle is in motion. Both your TV and your Blu-ray player are 110 volt systems. They will either have to be powered by the onboard inverter or by the 110 plug if you are plugged into shore power. Simply unplug your television and your DVD player and insert the plugs into the plug-in just above the inverter. This way you can also turn off your inverter. At the opposite end of the plugs, there is an off-on switch, as well as a cooling fan. You can turn the inverter off so that you do not have the fan noise. If you're not getting power through your inverter, check the reset on the GFI on the inverter. Ensure that the switch is on. Right now we have your TV and DVD player set up. 
as if we are on shore power or running off the generator system. We are plugged into the wall plug just above the inverter and the inverter switch is in the off position. You will also notice next to the wall plug there is also a white wall plate with a coaxial cable output. This coaxial cable output is for an additional TV. Just above the coaxial cable output you will find a black push button which is the booster for your crank up WineGuard TV antenna. For on air and TV receptions turn on your TV booster. A green light will light. If you are on park cable and hooked into the park cable of the RV resort, turn off your booster. This will allow the park cable to bypass to your television system. You will have to do a channel search on your television for local channels or for all the available channels that are available in the park. For your TV system, it is equipped with a WineGuard Crank Up TV antenna. This is a directional antenna. Crank your antenna up. Make sure it is fully in the upright position. This is a manual lift antenna. Once it is in the fully upright position, you can lock your crank back into position. Now you can rotate your antenna for the best possible reception. Your vehicle is equipped with a fantastic roof vent. It has a temperature control. This is strictly an exhaust fan. It does not move air into the vehicle, but exhausts air out of the vehicle. It works extremely well, especially with the rear windows in the open position to ventilate your vehicle. You will have three fan speeds that you can set your fan to, as well as an internal temperature switch determining when your fan will engage and what temperature it will be in your coach when the fan engages. Your fantastic fan is also equipped with a safety switch. When you crank your fan down, it will push in the plunger, which will turn off your fantastic fan. The plunger is on the front edge of the fan, and you can typically see it through the screen, just to the left-hand side of the fan blades. Your Chevrolet Lexer is equipped with a wet bath. This is a bathroom that is equipped with a shower and a floor drain. Keep your floor drain clear of all debris when using the shower so that the water can drain into the gray water tank. You will notice you've got hot and cold running water at your bathroom tap as well as the shower diverter. The shower is typically hooked into the center portion of the tap. Once the water is running you can pull up the inverter to use your shower. To use your shower Pull your curtain completely around by the door side. Pull the curtain for the window down on the driver's side. Place the plastic curtain that is with the vehicle over top of the cloth curtain so that the cloth curtain will remain dry when using your wet bath. Typically this is not a stand-up shower but is a wet bath where you remain seated and use your toilet as the seat as you shower in this vehicle. Your vehicle is also equipped with the Dometic China Bowl Toilet. This China Bowl Toilet is similar to a toilet that you would find in your home. This China Bowl Toilet has a full-size toilet seat. To flush your China Bowl Toilet, there is a foot flush just located on the side. Simply push down the foot flush to flush your toilet. If you push the foot flush just slightly down without opening the bottom bowl, your toilet bowl will fill with water. Your vehicle is equipped with a 16,000 BTU furnace. This furnace is controlled by the rear thermostat, the same thermostat that controls your rooftop air conditioner. You will notice when you select the furnace mode, the first thing that will happen is the fan will run. The furnace will then ignite. The ignition will stay on for a period of time to give off heat. Once the furnace has stopped producing heat, the fan will continue to run for a short period of time just to ventilate itself. Your vehicle is equipped with swivel driver and passenger seats. It is only recommended that you do so when the vehicle is in a stopped and parked position. You may find it easier to swivel your seat from outside the vehicle. Slide your seat to a central position so that the backrest will clear the B pillar and the seat cushion will clear the motor mount. Pull the release and swivel your seat. Swivel the seat with the seat towards the motor cover of the vehicle. When rotating your seat, 
rotate the seat in the reverse direction with the seat portion rotating towards the engine cover and back into the forward position. You will notice when you rotate your seat back, it will lock into the forward position once it has reached the full forward position. To rotate your driver's seat, move your steering wheel into the full upright position, slide your driver's seat into a central location, push the release lever that's located down on the seat base and rotate the driver's seat with the backrest out towards the driver's door. Your driver's seat rotation will be limited by your steering wheel and closet of your vehicle. This driver's seat will not lock into position when rotated. To move your driver's seat back, reverse the rotation, turn your driver's seat back until it clicks and locks into the forward position. Then you can adjust the slide mechanism for your driving comfort. Your Chevrolet main fuse panel is located right below the driver's seat base. To release the fuse panel to access your fuses, press the tabs on either side of the fuse panel, lift the lid, pull the seat rotation lever out of the way, and slide the cover off. Please refer to your Chevrolet owner's manual as to what fuse operates what system. To replace the fuse panel lid, slide your swivel handle over, Slide your fuse panel cover over into the locking tabs, press them down, and lock it into position. Never leave your fuses unprotected. Your Chevrolet Lexer vehicle is equipped with the Chevrolet Express Van standard equipment, such as air conditioning, heat, tow haul, cruise control, delayed lights, delayed wipers, these are all Chevrolet features. Please refer to your Chevrolet manual for proper operation. Pleasureway also installs the Kenwood in-dash backup camera and GPS system into your Chevrolet vehicle. The key must be in the on position to activate your radio. You will find that the GPS antenna is located on the dashboard of your vehicle to the left-hand side of your steering wheel. The Kenwood is equipped with a Garmin GPS system. The backup camera will engage when you place the vehicle in reverse. To bring up your navigation system and other options on your Kenwood stereo, press your menu button, either the touchscreen on the display or the actual physical button just above the volume. You will find you can bring up your navigation, your CD player, you can wire in to your telephone with your Bluetooth, you can also bring in a system for your iPod, a USB import, which is a USB outlet is located in the cubby just over top of your vents next to the radio. You have the option to bring in Sirius and HD radio. HD radio will bring in your local channels. In the upper cubby shelf, you will find the microphone for your Bluetooth hands-free system as well as your USB connection for other devices. Your Chevrolet Lexer is powered by the Chevrolet 6-liter Vortec engine. The 6-liter Vortec engine has been a staple in the Chevrolet lineup for a long period of time. It's coupled with an automatic overdrive transmission and there is also a tow package on this vehicle. Underneath the hood of your vehicle, you'll find the engine starting battery. This is a Chevrolet component, and if there is a problem with the engine starting battery, please refer to your Chevy dealer. Underneath the Chevrolet hood as well is the underhood fuse panel. To access this panel, you may have to push some of the hoses out of the way, undo the locks on both sides, and you can slide your cover off. It is a little bit more difficult to get the cover out. Please refer to your Chevy owner's manual for fuse, fuse locations, and what the fuse is actually power. The only component installed underneath your hood by Pleasureway Industries is the smart solenoid. The smart solenoid takes the charge from the alternator and splits the charge between the engine starting battery and the auxiliary battery as you drive down the road or as your vehicle is running. Its primary charge will go to the engine starting battery. The secondary charge will go to the auxiliary battery. The smart solenoid monitors your battery charge as well while you're driving down the road. 
On the driver door pillar, you will find your tire pressure ratings as well as your load rating for your vehicle. It tells your occupant and cargo carrying capacity as well as the pressure for each tire, both front and rear, and also your spare tire. You will also find Pleasureway VIN number label, which also contains vital information for you on your Pleasureway van motorhome. Next to your driver door, you'll find your furnace vent. This furnace vent is for the 16,000 BTU furnace located underneath the closet inside your vehicle. Please keep this furnace vent clear of all obstacles as this is a fresh air draw and also the exhaust for your furnace. Next to your furnace vent, you will find your fresh water fill. This is where you fill your fresh water tank. Open the door. This is a lockable door. The number 751 key is used to unlock this door. Remove the cap using a garden hose. Fill your water tank. You will notice that your water tank will be full when you have water dripping from the vent line located next to the fill. The fresh water tank is located directly below the fresh water fill. The fresh water drain valve is located underneath the running board directly below the fresh water fill located directly on the tank. Your vehicle is equipped with the standard Chevrolet gas fill. This gas fill is standard equipment on the Chevrolet van. The 2014 and 2015 model years do take the E85 fuel, noted by the yellow cap on the gas fill. Your vehicle is also equipped with the utility shower. The utility shower on the interior vehicle is actually located in the driver ottoman. For the exterior, your utility shower is locked with the 751 key. Open the door, swing the door out. This will give you the access to your shower head, which can be slid in and out of your vehicle. And you have hot and cold running water at this point for your exterior shower. The exterior storage, you have a large exterior storage on the outside on the driver's side of your Chevrolet Lexer. The exterior storage is a locking storage cabinet. It is open with the 751 key. Turn and unlock your storage cabinet. Lift the door, lock it into position with the locking catch. You will notice we have the power cord for your vehicle located in this compartment. Caution this exterior compartment may not be fully moisture free as humidity and weather conditions may contribute to moisture inside this compartment. Next to the driver's side storage compartment door is the sewer door. Open the small cabinet door just in front of the rear driver's side wheel. In this area, you will find your black and gray water dump handles, as well as your sewer cap. Remove the sewer cap and attach the sewer hose to drain both your black and your gray water. Your sewer hose is located in the rear component compartment behind the rear wheel. To attach your sewer hose, press it into position, lock it on to the stud attachments. Drain your sewer hose into a sanitized dump location. Always drain your black water first and use your gray water to flush out your sewer hose. Located at the rear of the driver's side is your component compartment. The component compartment contains your sewer hose, your city water, park cable, and your power cord connection. This compartment is a lockable compartment. The lock is open with the 751 key. You will also notice the generator tailpipe directly below this compartment. In this compartment, you have the sewer hose. We had used the sewer hose previous on the sewer connection. This is the storage facility for your sewer hose. You have your city water connection. You simply hook on with a standard garden hose. Always remember to use a pressure regulator on your city water connection. The preferred pressure is approximately 40 PSI. Also, your park cable. If you're camping in a campground that has a cable connection, you can hook your park cable onto this outlet to bring in the cable channels.
You also have your 30 amp power cord connection. Lift the door, press your cable into position. Turn the cable, lock it into position. Always connect to your vehicle first, then to your park plug-in. Your Chevrolet van is equipped with the six gallon suburban water heater. This is the SW6D water heater. This is a gas powered water heater. It is non-electrical. The 12 volt does control the electric for ignition and also temperature. In this water heater, you'll find your gas valve, your spark, and at the bottom, a very important component is your anode rod. This is a sacrificial anode rod that allows itself to be eaten away by the minerals in your water. In some locations, it needs to be changed yearly so that it protects your water heater. Also inside this water heater compartment, if the water heater fails to light, check the reset. Also check to see that your water heater is full of water by lifting the pressure release valve. Ensure that your water heater vents are kept clear of debris and blockage while the water heater is in operation. It is recommended when the water heater is in operation that your driver's side rear window remain closed. Your low point drain valve on your vehicle is located directly above the generator exhaust system behind your component compartment. Located on the rear of your Chevrolet Lexer is your air conditioner vent panel. Ensure that these vents are kept clear and clean. Right below the vents is the backup camera system. This backup camera can be adjusted and tilted up or down depending on what view you would like from your backup camera. As well, there's a sun shield that can be adjusted on your backup camera to ensure that you are getting optimum visibility. Your vehicle is equipped with a rear door mounted spare tire. Your rear door mounted spare tire is a locking continental cover and ring. Use the 602 key to unlock your continental spare tire. Snap open the weather tight seal and use the 602 key to unlock your spare tire. Swing the lock out of the way and clip it from the opposite side. And open and remove your ring. You will need your jack tool and your lug nut wrench to remove the spare tire from the spare tire carrier. Your jack and your jack tool components for your Chevrolet Lexer van are located on the passenger side next to the power sofa frame towards the outside wall. Your propane tank is located between the hitch rails just under the rear bumper. To access your propane and your propane fill and also your propane on off valve, open the bumper door by releasing the swell latch and flipping it straight out, swing the door open. This will give you access to your propane fill, your bleeder valve, your propane off on, and also your propane gauge. Only fill your propane tank to 80%. At 80%, fluid will appear on the propane bleeder valve. Your propane tank has a manual gauge. The gauge will read full when the propane tank is 80% full. Please refer to the back of the door for all the cautions on filling. At your local propane store, they will be able to fill this tank and they will be able to fill it to 80%. Your generator is located just in front of the propane tank under the rear of the vehicle. Please refer to your own user's manual as to operation and also maintenance of your Onan generator. The Onan generator is a 2.8 microlite. The Onan generator is a gasoline powered generator which is fed from your main fuel tank the generator will shut off when there is a quarter tank left in your fuel tank. If your generator refuses to run, always check to see that you have adequate fuel in your onboard vehicle fuel tank. On the passenger side of your vehicle, you have your battery compartment. Unlock the battery compartment with the 751 key. Lift your door and this will give you access to your SRM 27 series battery. To slide your battery tray out, lift and release the locking pin. 
pull and slide your SRM 27 series out of the compartment. This will allow you to check the fluid level of your battery. Also, this will allow you to check the connections on your battery posts to ensure that they are tight and also clean. The white wires in this compartment are ground wires. All other colors are positive wires. Always ensure your battery tray is locked in position for traveling down the road. On the exterior of your coach, on the passenger side, you also have a 110 volt plug. This plug is operated when you are plugged into shore power or running off your generator. This plug is also controlled by the GFI located in your kitchen area. If this plug is not functioning, first check the GFI in the kitchen and then check the breaker that is related to this plug. Your vehicle is also equipped with the exterior porch light. The exterior porch light is controlled by the switches located on the kitchen end panel. Next to the passenger side entrance door, is your fridge vents. This is the ventilation for your domatic refrigerator. Ensure these fridge vents are kept clear of all debris so that your fridge can function properly. It is recommended that your fridge be level to operate to its full extent. Also, inside your lower fridge vent, you will find the 110 volt plug for your fridge. Your fridge is also controlled by the GFI located in your kitchen. To operate your carefree awning, turn the power switch on on the carefree switch system just inside the side entrance door. Push the button to extend the awning. You will have to hold the button while the awning extends. Your awning is a self-supporting, fully extended awning. This is the 11 foot carefree electric awning. It is equipped with a wind sensor. When the wind does come up, it will automatically retract as long as the awning switch is left in the on position. To adjust the pitch of your awning, you can use the Allen screws located on the awning case side of the arm. Both the front and back awning arm will have the Allen screw adjustments. Please refer to your carefree owner's manual for proper adjustment details. Ensure that your awning is fully retracted before moving your vehicle. This concludes the orientation portion of your 2015 Pleasureway Lexer built on the Chevrolet chassis. Please refer to your Chevrolet owner's manual and your Pleasureway owner's manual for more details.